Namaste. So we're going to continue with the Sutta on emptiness. And this time we're going to talk about nothingness. Further, Ananda, the monk, not attending to the perception of the dimension of the infinity of space, not attending to the perception of the dimension of the infinity of consciousness, attends to the singleness based on the perception of the dimension of nothingness. His mind takes pleasure, finds satisfaction, settles and indulges in its perception of the dimension of nothingness. So we see that this sutta describes a series of contemplations and each step is more subtle than the last. Each step is more peaceful than the last. This is called tranquility meditation, samana, uh, samana dhyana. So what this means is that the mind is becoming progressively quieter, more settled, and deeper in a trance of quietude, silence, non-action, and certainly non-identification, non-projection. Huh? So many things. See, <laughs> the Buddha's process is a negative process. It consists in leaving off so many things that we normally keep active, uh, like a juggler with so many balls in the air. Our minds are always throwing thoughts around and projecting different, uh, well, the, the word the Buddha uses is conceits. Conceit is a conception, but it's a particular kind of conception designed to reinforce the ego. Now, the ego is an expression of individuality, but individuality doesn't really exist. <laughs> so the ego is a fabrication. It's an imagination. Just like becoming identified with the story on a movie screen or video screen, not realizing that it's just a succession of still pictures projected on a white background. In the same way, we become identified with the story of this body and its surroundings and all the other so-called individuals <laughs> and other imaginary entities in this fictional story. We're not content to simply see what's there. We have to project something on top of it. Of course, the only thing that's really there is the whole Brahman or God, if you want to go down that far. <laughs> we project this idea of God on Brahman, on the whole. We try to give it a personality that helps us justify our personalities. But all such notions are completely fictional, contrived, compounded, conditioned, caused, made, constructed, fabricated. In other words, they're just stories. They're fictitious. Huh? Science fiction. <laughs> and the proof of this is that when we go to sleep at night, the whole thing dissolves. Bye-bye. And we're in a different world. A world where there is no ego, there is no control, there is no possession. Everything just happens. In many ways, 
It's a more real world than the one we live in while awake. Because at least we're not pretending to be the controller. We're not pretending to own our actions and their results. We're simply the effect of whatever karma is being played out in our dreams. But then we go into dreamless sleep. And this is our actual identity. This is our real nature. This is being one with Brahman. It happens to everybody every night. If we don't, we can't survive. We need this nurturing by the one. We need to experience our identity with the whole, or we go nuts. Read, read up on sleep research and what happens when people are deprived of deep sleep. Huh? It only takes a few days before they completely lose it. They start hallucinating. <laughs> they start dreaming while awake, in other words. But actually, we're always dreaming while awake. It's just that we have socially approved dreams instead of so-called psychotic dreams, like the dreams when we're asleep. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> let's go on with the sutta. He discerns that whatever disturbances that would exist based on the perception of the dimension of the infinity of space are not present. Whatever disturbances that would exist based on the perception of the dimension of the infinity of consciousness are not present. There is only this modicum of disturbance, the singleness based on the perception of the dimension of nothingness. He discerns that this mode of perception is empty of the perception of the dimension of the infinity of space. This mode of perception is empty of the perception of the dimension of the infinity of consciousness. There is only this non-emptiness, the singleness based on the perception of the dimension of nothingness. Thus, he regards it as empty of whatever is not there. Whatever remains, he discerns as present. There is this. And so this, his entry into emptiness accords with actuality, is undistorted in meaning, and pure. So what is Buddha doing here? He's taking us step by step through the progressive meditation of a monk who is actually him. He's describing his own path to enlightenment. The step-by-step -step concentration of the mind on the subtler and subtler realms of existence, which also include the exclusion of the coarser realms. See, it's just like when you're doing something that you are absorbed in, let's say uh, some kind of work that you really enjoy. Uh, like for me, it's practicing music. When I'm practicing music, I'm not aware <laughs> of the room around me. I'm not aware of the cars passing on the street. I'm not aware of the birds or the sky or even Arunachala right in front of me because my keyboard is right under the window looking out at Arunachala. But I'm not aware of any of that. See, like the Buddha says, this mode of perception is devoid of the recognition of these other realities, these other presences. What does he say? Whatever disturbances that would exist based on the perception of those things I'm not concentrating on are not present. Why? Perception is pain. Perception is suffering. All perception is a disturbance. Why? Because first of all, it draws a boundary between subject and object. And that's painful right there. And second of all, 
it utilizes the senses and the mind. Or I should say, the senses including the mind. And the senses all give a biased picture of what they're perceiving. The picture is biased in terms of what we perceive as pleasurable and displeasurable. So most of the time we strive towards pleasurable sensations, isn't it? And we strive to avoid unpleasurable or displeasurable sensations. And this is work. This is a job. This is effort. It's very demanding. Between that effort and projecting our ego and our false identification with some individual poisonality, <laughs> as we say in New Jersey, this is a full-time job. And this is why existence is suffering. Because to have existence, one has to be a separate individual. And from the very beginning, that's suffering, that's painful. So what the Buddha is doing here is step by step removing all these dualities by putting them out of mind and just concentrating on one perception and maybe the absence of certain other perceptions. See, for example, when one is concentrating on unlimited consciousness, he's not aware of the dimension of unlimited space. Why? Because the unlimited consciousness pervades and fills the unlimited space. And similarly here, He's aware of the dimension of nothingness, but he's not aware of the dimension of unlimited consciousness anymore. Why? Because the dimension of nothingness fills the dimension of unlimited consciousness. So all of these states of perception, all of these states of concentration and contemplation are for practice. They are not just a historical record of some ancient sages meditation. They're for us. For us to experience, for us to explore, for us to benefit from. I can't tell you how pleasurable it is to concentrate on constant on uh, consciousness. I can't tell you, I can't express in words how wonderful it is to perceive nothingness. I, I can't express, there's no way to express how wonderful it is to perceive the emptiness of form, the emptiness of individuality, even the emptiness of consciousness that's associated with the contemplation of nothingness. Why? Because all these things are a disturbance. All these things are painful. They're all suffering. And so with each progressive step in this meditation on emptiness, the Buddha is taking us further and further away from suffering further and further into peace and pleasure. Huh? I can't express how beautiful emptiness is. It has a beauty that's so compelling that afterwards one remembers it like, like with great nostalgia, like a night spent with a lover or something like that. There's no way that I can express it, except poetically, like, like uh, by metaphor. You have to try it for yourself. Huh? I've included a link to the complete sutta in the video description. Go read the whole thing. Try it for yourself, step by step. 
even if you don't make it all the way to the end, that's okay. Huh? It's baby steps. You take baby steps, then after a while you can walk, and then after more practice you can run. And by the end, you'll be able to fly. <laughs> Om Tat Sat. Buddha Saranai. <laughs>